Welcome to the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 4, Work and Energy. The section is 4.9, Gravitational Potential Energy. Here's the scenario. An astronaut is lost in space near an alien planet and is orbiting moon. Shown at the right, not drawn a scale. At a particular instance, the moon is directly opposite to the astronaut on the far side of that planet, in line with the center of that planet at a distance r from the astronaut. I'm just going to label this. Here's the astronaut. Here's the planet. And here's the moon. Okay, the first part asks us to mark an X on the diagram showing the indication of the location where the astronaut could move so that she would feel no gravi no net gravitational force. The answer is right here. I'm not gonna go over the explanation for it. Okay, it's weird. But here are some notes for the rest of it. This is called Newton's Law's Gravitational Potential. It states it right here, Fg, the force of the gravitational force, or um, you could also call this the gravitational field. The, for me, I'm gonna call it the gravitational field. The gravitational field exists as G, which is the gravitational constant, which is this value, mass one, mass two, and, and R squared. R squared is measured as the distance between them. So the gravitational field is between two masses and the distance between those two masses. There exists a gravitational field. Newton states, every particle in the universe attracts every other particle with a force that is proportionally to the product, product right here, multiplication, between of their masses and inversely proportioned, that's because R squared is on the bottom, to the squared right, that's the squared here, of the distance between them. The force acts along the line joining those two particles. Here's some more information. If you would like to see the diagram, it looks like this. Uh, this is the Newton's sec third law. The force exerted on the Earth by the moon is the same thing as the force exerted on the moon by the Earth. All right, okay. So the first one, part B. If the planet was not between the astronaut and the moon, but the distance between R was the same to with the gravitational force on the astronaut, increase, decrease, or stay the same? I would say the answer is to stay the same. Now I'm gonna give you the explanation. On screen is the answer. I just want to make sure that you understand it. it's between two objects, okay? Here, the planet does nothing. The astronaut and the moon still act on each other, even if the planet goes away. Okay, the still, they're still going to be a force between them. None of the masses changes, nor did the distance between them change. Therefore, the force remains the same. M1 is the mass of the astronaut. M2 is the mass of the moon. Next. The astronaut jet pack is powered by an arc reactor that can supply a nearly luminous amount of energy and thrust. The first part of the question asks, how far does the um, person have to be away to escape the planet moon system? And the second part is that if the astronaut was instead standing on the moon, would it require less or more energy to escape the system? So I wanna show you a visual of what is happening, right? So right now there's a gravitational field between this. So there is a F here, right? Okay, there's a force of gravity. Even if you move super far, even if you move the astronaut super, super far away, there is still a, there is still a force between them, okay? At what point can you move the astronaut so far away that there is no more FG? You have to look at the equation for that. To escape the gravitational pull between them, the distance between them has to be um, basically infinite. Because notice that the r squared is in the middle, is, is in the bottom. And to, right here, to get the force, to get this to become zero, this has to go to infinity which can't be it because you can't really divide by infinity. You can't get far enough away to, f to not feel the force of gravity. This, this interpretation of the force of gravity states that no matter where you are in the known universe in this dimension, can you escape a gravitational pull from each other?
Okay. Now it states that if the astronaut was on the moon, okay, it get closer to the moon, standing on the moon, would it require more or less energy to escape the system? So let me draw this. Let me get this image now. I want you to think about this. Okay. Now the astronaut is going to be right on the moon. Okay. Right. If it's on the moon, is it's going to require more or less energy to escape this system? Okay. Think about it. Here it has a force of gravity, right? What's happening to the force of gravity? It's it's going here, 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 right? The force of gravity is still zero. But what about here? The what is the force of gravity here? Right? It's still getting pulled a lot, right, onto the planet. For it to escape, it has to what? Increase the R. For it to increase the R, what is happening? So think about it. Okay, right now it has to put in energy to escape. But if it's closer, you see how it's getting pulled in more. So it it needs to get move away. It's like a magnet, right? The closer the magnets are, the stronger it is. But the str but the farther away the magnets, the less it feels. Okay. So if you're closer. Okay, you're gonna feel so much more of the gravitational field. Why? The R squared goes to what? Approaches zero, right? You're going to feel, right? R squared goes to zero. R goes to zero. R goes to zero. Strong. F F G goes up. F G goes up. F G goes up. R is as small as possible. F G is almost its maximum value, right? To escape that F G, you have to put in what? More energy. Okay. So let me move that over and now give you the academic answer with the word. Okay. That's what I just said. Now it's just in words. As the astronaut approaches the moon, the radius between them goes to zero, resulting in the force between them increasing. Remember that work is equal to force times distance equal to the change in energy. You could just think about the. You could almost just think about F D equals to delta E. Okay. As the force increases, and we know the force will increase because you're getting closer to the moon. Because R goes down, the amount of energy has to increase. The reason why the energy has to increase is, look at the equation. Force is going to go up. Okay, force has to go up. So what has to be what has to be with the energy? It also has to go up. Okay. So the work also has to increase. The astronaut is doing work by trying to escape the system. But has to do more work because their more energy is required to escape because the force increases. The next one, the astronaut is able to travel a very far distance x away from the planet moon system at a constant velocity. We um, needing a total amount of e to do so. Explain why the jetpack must do work on the astronaut to maintain a constant velocity. There is always a constant force pulling back the astronaut back to the planet moon system to maintain a constant velocity. The jetpack has to exert a force opposite to that um, to the force being pulled. If this is the astronaut, let me grab the astronaut here, right uh, from the planet. Okay, so here's the astronaut. Notice that the astronaut is trying to escape farther away. Okay, for it to go and have a velocity in this direction, in this direction, okay, there has to be a force. Notice that there is a force pulling back F, uh, F um, moon on astronaut. Okay, or okay, so there has to be a force forward. Okay, opposite to that, that is going to be the force of the jetpack, a force of jetpack. All right, to get a velocity. Okay, remember the jetpack has to supply a force in the opposite direction. That's what I mean there. Good. Now you're going to sketch um, a graph um, of the force exerted by the jetpack versus the distance away from it. Okay. Remember, this is exactly like what Newton said. It is an inverse square law. Let me just grab this for you. This is called inverse square law. And what an in inverse square law looks like is that it's decaying. 
like an inverse. All right? So it's not linear. It decays like this. Ah, that's horrible. Let's make that right. That's much better. Okay? So, because it's decaying at 1 over x squared. Okay? There you go. And the question now asks, describe the... Now we're going to describe, identify the feature of the graph for this. Okay. So the force pulled on the astronaut decays based on the inverse square law. The work done is the area under the curve of the force versus distance. Force versus distance. So this whole area, this is the work done. This whole area. This is the, can I do this in purple? This is going to be the work done. Okay. So, notice that the amount of work done by the jetpack decreases as the, as the distance increase. That would make sense because there is less force pulling on it as it's further away. Therefore, it requires the jetpack to do less work. Lastly, describe the power required for the jetpack as the astronaut travels from the planet moon system. As it moves it forward, will there be more power as distance increase? Will the jetpack release the same amount of power as the distance or will it do less power as the distance increased? Okay, here's some information on the power. Power is defined as the rate at which work is being done. Power equals to average work, which is work over time. Let's just write the here. P is equal to work over time. But we know what work is. Work is just force times distance. Time is just time. Notice that this is what? This is distance. This is the here's the force but what is this part distance over time you know what distance over time is distance over time is what that is a velocity so a lot of people will actually say that power it's just force times the velocity you should already see that good the units for that is watts Using this idea, look at the velocity and look at the force and talk about the power. Let's see if you could get this one. So power can be thought as force times the average velocity. I already show you the deviation for it here. If velocity is constant and the force is decreasing, then the power has to decrease as well. Let's see if that makes sense. Okay, V is constant. So this goes, so let's just rewrite this here. So power is equal to, we don't need W over T. We know that that equals to um, force over velocity. Okay. We know that the, right here, the velocity is constant. So this is constant. So ignore this. Then we know what happens to the force as distance happens. It's decaying. So force is going to go down. If F goes down, P also has to go down because, you know, velocity is constant. So there you go. Therefore, as the astronaut travels from the planet moon system, the jetpack needs power um, to decrease as the distance. So it's going to have less power as decreases. So think about it. The farther the astronaut. So here it requires. So let's just draw this again. OK. So here it's going to have it's going to it's going to need a lot of power to move. It needs power, a lot of power, a lot of power, less power, less power, less power, less power, less power, less power, super less, super less, almost no power is the power is going to be so little at this point. OK, so that's the way you're thinking about it, because force increases, force increases, force increase. Um, sorry, force decrease, force decrease, force decrease, force decrease. So the force, so the power is going to decrease. Right? Okay. Likewise, if it goes in here, okay, force increase, force increase, force increase, force increase, force increase, force increase. All right. So there you go. 
that is all your solutions for 4i.